Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we are diving into Lightroom Classic, and I'm going to be walking you through everything you need to know from start to finish, from import all the way to export, those little cheeky export settings at the end. I'm gonna be running you through everything you need to know to be able to get you started in Lightroom Classic today. So without further ado, and without wasting any more time, let's dive into the laptop Let's get this video started. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom Classic. And to be honest with you, chances are your Lightroom Classic isn't gonna look like this because you may or may not have photos in there. So this is the library section of things. If you open up Lightroom, it's gonna look something like this. So I'm just gonna run you through a few things. Up the top here, we've got library, and this is where we're gonna be importing, exporting, we can sort, do selects, all that kind of stuff. The develop tab is where we're gonna develop our stuff. And then to be completely honest with you, I don't really use anything else up here, right? It's really just the library and develop tab. These are the main two things you wanna be focusing on, especially in the beginning. So how do we get our photos here into Lightroom? Well, you've got two main options. First thing we can do is dive over to the export button here, sorry, the import button here. So we can just click import and then this is gonna bring up this tab right here and we can go through our files over on the left here and we can go through here and find the photos that we wanna import. Or something that I prefer to do because I do a lot of stuff through Finder. I'm gonna open up Finder and this is a photo I've already pre-selected. This was from my New Zealand trip. You've got a few options here. You can drag and drop this onto the Lightroom Classic thing right there or you can just drag and drop it into Lightroom like that. But you do have to be on the library tab. You can't do this in the develop tab. Okay, so here we are inside of our little import area, if you will. And what you can do here is you can simply go through and we can check all our photos just like this. And you can just keep going and this is gonna load your photos way easier. So let's say we wanted this photo in our import. We can click include in import and this is just gonna make sure that this photo comes over to Lightroom with us. And then if you wanna go back to the main little section here, you can do so and you can see what ones are ticked, what ones aren't ticked. You know, So if we just go all the way down, we've got this one, this is the one we're importing. So we're actually gonna come back up here and tick this off right there. And we can come down here. So let's just say we're happy with importing this one and we're nearly done. So as you can see over on the right hand side, we've got file handling. So this is something I use all the time. Let's say we wanna add this to a collection to keep things really organized. So we're gonna add this to a collection. And as you can see here, I've got all of my collections here and let's add a new one. And let's say Lightroom Classic YouTube Walkthrough. Oh, do we get that right? No, we've got a capital L. All right, Lightroom Classic YouTube Walkthrough. Hit create, hit import, and now, what that's gonna do is Lightroom is gonna import our photo and it's put us in our tiny little, where are we, Lightroom Classic YouTube walkthrough. This is where we are. And as you can see, I've got a whole lot of other stuff there. So anyway, that is more or less our kind of process of getting photos into Lightroom. And then if you wanted to cull further, so let's say we had a few more of these photos in here, we can double click, we can bring this up nice and big, we can zoom in if we want to, maybe not the most flattering photo of Amanda, but we move on. And uh, let's say we wanted to rate this image. So what you can do is you can use one, two, three, four, and five on your keyboard, and this is going to set stars. So let's say you had a load of photos and you only wanted to rate the four or five star photos. You can go through all your photos. You can just arrow through them and you could hit five, four, one, two, three. And then we can come over here to filters and we could hit rated. And then you can choose your rated filters right here and you have a whole load of other filters as well, but this is the way I do it. So I just go through, rate my photos from one to five. And let's say I wanted to edit no photos other than uh, you know, a, a four star, it would be happy just like that. And let's say I wanted to edit all my photos less than a four star, well then I just tick this. And of course, since we've only got one photo here as a five star photo, that's not gonna work. So if we go up to five stars right there, we've got our photo here, and that's more or less the import process. It's fairly simple. I know there is a lot of things to take in here, so maybe put me on 0.75 speed, and that might make a little bit more sense. I do apologize. I do seem to go through things fairly quickly. So anyway, that's our import process. We're now gonna dive into the develop tab and I'm gonna show you one, how I would edit this photo, but I'm also gonna break down all the tools and settings in the develop tab to make sure you have a complete sound understanding of everything. So what we can do is we can head over to the develop tab here and I'm just gonna close this and I'm also gonna close the preset tab. By the way, if you wanna check any of my presets out, you can do so, links in the bio, links in the description actually, and you can use this code at checkout for a cheeky little discount. But today we're not focusing on presets. So here we are inside of our develop tab. And as you can see over on the right, things are looking a little bit different. So we've got the basic tab, we've got the tone curve, 
We've got our color mixer. Now, yours may not look like this. Yours might look something a little bit like this. And if this is the first time you're opening up Lightroom, you'll actually have things looking like this. So you do need to, whoop, you do need to open them up just like that, pressing the little arrow, and then you're good to go. So the way I have this set up is I make sure I have all ticked and opened. And there's actually a really, really powerful tool on the other side of mixer, which is called point color. We'll dive into that in a minute. But anyway, we've got the, the, the color mixer here. Coming down, we've got color grading. We've also got detail. And then we've got lens correction, transform, lens blur. This is something brand new, very, very cool tool. And then we've got effects and camera calibration. We're gonna be walking through absolutely all of them. And as you can see here, we've still got all of our filters on so we can leave them as is. That just kind of comes over from our library tab. And now we're good to go. All right, so let's start with the basic tab. The basic tab here is where you're gonna be controlling your white balance, which are the overall color balances in your image, and then also the exposure and a little bit of contrast. So as you can see here, exposure, bright and dark, pretty straightforward. Actually, you know what? Let's start with white balance. So let's say we wanted this photo. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep zooming in. I'm not gonna do Amanda dirty like that, right? Her face is, maybe, a, maybe I just took the photo at the wrong time. Anyway, let's say we wanted to make this a little bit of a cooler image. All we've got to do here is come up to the temperature bar and we can just dial this back ever so slightly and maybe we're getting a little bit of a nicer tone in our shot. Or maybe we're just getting a more accurate tone to what we would have wanted. Now, let's say you shot something and you're really not sure kind of where to put it. Well, fortunately, Lightroom, well, if we, by the way, if you want to reset any sliders, you just double click your little slider and it'll go back to where it was, okay? So let's say we had no idea how to correct our white balance here. And by the way, this is a pretty accurate white, well, pretty accurate white balance. We could come up here to auto. So as you can see there, I've just clicked on this little custom thing right here because I did move the slider. And it probably is gonna say add shot and you can just hit auto and then Lightroom is going to sometimes nail this and sometimes not. So I'm gonna command Z that, I'm gonna undo that. Uh, you can also hit control Z if you're on Windows. Another thing you can do as well, if there are any white, gray, or black parts in your image, best to use with white parts of your image, you can pick this little dropper up here and then you can click somewhere in the image. So maybe, maybe we got lucky and there's a tiny little white part right here that should be pure white. We can come over here, we can click that and things haven't changed very much purely for the fact that this is quite an accurate white balance. So that's more or less how to change your white balance and color tone in your shot. And the same thing goes with tint. If you think things are a little bit too green or a little bit too purple, obviously you would just move it over to the green side if you thought they were too purple and vice versa. Just gonna command Z there. Okay, let's move over to our exposure tab here. So before we do that, actually, I'm just gonna run you through a little bit of a good way to test if your exposure is too bright or too dark. So up here, we've got this thing, which is called a histogram. And if I move the exposure, you can see this histogram really starts to move. And this is pretty much just showing us how our image is exposed in a graph form. It's pretty cool, I promise it's not that technical. So right here, we've got the blacks. And the idea is you don't want everything on the blacks and you don't want everything on the whites. So this is the blacks, this is the whites, and then you've got highlights, mid-tones, which they call exposure, and then you've got the shadows. So this here, if I just reset that, this was as the image was shot, you can see a lot of everything is on the darker black shadowy kind of area. And if we just boost this up like crazy, as you can see, it goes all the way to the whites and the bright parts of the area. Neither of these are ideal and you don't want anything usually touching all the way at the end here or all the way on the left here because this is going to start clipping your image. This means that you have parts in your image that are so bright that they're just pure white if they're on the bright side of town or they're just pure black if they're on the dark side of the town. Definitely not what you want. So this is a really good way to be able to keep up and make sure that you're not pushing or pulling things too far. So in an image like this, I would look at increasing the exposure just a little bit. This is a little bit of a dark and moody photo anyway, so I'm gonna keep it like that. And then the contrast, I usually don't play with the contrast. We're about to dive into the tone curve just after this, which is a very, very important tool, but I'm gonna leave the exposure as is for now, or sorry, I'm gonna leave the contrast as is for now, just boosting the exposure a little bit. I'm gonna to come to the highlights here. I don't really want too many bright parts in this image apart from Amanda, and I'm gonna be running you through everything. We're gonna be getting into, getting into crop, masking, the whole lot later on, but for now, if we just Take your time, trust me. I'm just gonna dial these highlights back just a little bit and this is gonna really balance out all the bright leaves in our shot. We might boost up the shadows a touch 
just, just clear up a little bit of stuff in here. And I'm gonna leave the whites and the blacks as is. Maybe boost up the blacks a little bit. Just take them off this little tiny part of the histogram here. And we've got really nothing to play around with the whites in this image. If I move the whites up, I'm going to start getting a little bit too bright. Things get a little bit strange. So maybe we'd, we might touch them up a little bit, but nothing crazy. Okay, so now in still in the basic tab, we have our presence, and this is going to control the texture, clarity, and dehaze. This is something that you do not want to go crazy on. So for example, if we zoom in right here, not too far, like I said, not gonna zoom in too often, right? So let's say we zoom in here and we've got our texture slider. If I just ramp that up, Things are looking a little strange now. Everything's over sharpened or just seems over sharpened. And if we do the same thing with clarity, this maybe is like an Instagram filter from 2011. Not what you want, all right? So we can reset those just double clicking again. Something I personally do is I always drop my clarity because cameras these days are taking incredibly sharp photos. So you don't want things to be over sharp. So I'm just dropping my clarity ever so slightly and maybe a little bit of texture as well is gonna be dropped just to take that really sharp edge off. And if you do have people in your photos, you don't particularly want to be highlighting every little skin pore on their face. And this is what's gonna happen if you are cranking that clarity and texture slider up. Dehaze is also a really powerful tool. This isn't something that was, would really be well used in this photo, but if we dehazed it, you can see it gets a little bit richer and deeper, but this is best used when you've got a lot of fog in your shot and you kind of either wanna emphasize that, you would decrease the dehaze, or if you wanted to take a little bit of that fog away, you would increase the dehaze. But I'm gonna reset that for now. I'm happy with how things are looking. And then the vibrance and saturation, these two sliders are actually completely different. They're gonna control the global colors in your shot, but the vibrance is going to only affect the underrepresented colors. So for example, if we have a look at this photo here, we've got a lot of greens, yellows, and oranges. So the vibrance is gonna control that to a degree, but it's gonna more try and balance out the other colors in the shot. So maybe the purple on Amanda's jacket, maybe a little bit of blue in here. So if we really ramp up that, sure, like I said, it's also gonna ramp up everything else, but you can see now the purple is really popping. So this is a good way to sort of try and get a little bit more balance in your shot, or if you really just wanna focus in on one color, you can dial this down. Personally, I don't touch vibrance and I also don't touch saturation, by the way. Saturation just lifts everything evenly. So as you can see, the purple isn't as popping now and everything else around Amanda is just glowing. Um, I don't touch either of these sliders and that's because I do everything, all my color tweaking, all my saturation tweaking down in the HSL color mix tab. So for now, I'm gonna leave these as is, but if you do need an overall color boost to your shot, this is how to do it. Okay, now we're moving on to the tone curve. Now I've made a complete video breakdown of how the tone curve works. So I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty details, but I will give you a general overview. So you've got five different tone curves and you've also got five different areas. You've got the blacks down here. You've then got the shadows right here. And what you can do if you are on the RGB curve, so it's the second one along, this one gives you a little bit more of a visual way of, of how to adjust the tone curve. So as you can see, We've got the, the, the blacks at the exact point in the corner. Then we've got the shadows all the way up to here. And that I also call them the shadows and the darks. And then here you've got the midtones. Then here you've got the highlights. And then up here you've got the whites. So we're gonna dive into this one here because you can plot your own points. So we've got the blacks here. They've already got a point. We're then gonna put a point on the shadows, a point on the midtones, and a point on the highlights. Now this is controlling a lot of contrast in your shot, but it's also having an effect on your colors because if you come into these individual tone curves, so you've got the blues, the greens, and the reds, you can now push and pull different colors in and out of certain areas of your shot. So let's say we take the blue tone curve here. Let's say we wanted to add more blues into the shadows. So I could come here and I could put a point on the, on the shadows part and I'm gonna point, put a point here. They're like little anchor points. So for example, if I was just moving the blue, see how everything moves with me. But if I put a point there, now I'm just affecting this. And sure, this also gets a bit of a bend, not ideal. But the idea here is we're not moving the entire curve. So I'm just gonna Command Z that, right? We're just gonna be adding a little bit of blue. And actually, if we wanna avoid that as well, we can put another point there. If I'm just gonna be adding a little bit of blue into the into the shadows there, while I don't use the, uh, the red, green, and blue individual curves all that often, it's not my cup of tea, right? This is a powerful tool nonetheless. If you do wanna do it like this, I do it through the color grading section of this, which we'll get into in just a minute. Um, you can do this very, very quickly, and it's also extremely visual. But I'm gonna back out of all of these, and of course you can do this in the greens, 
tones and you can either you know push green or purple into the midtones oh sorry into the shadows or the midtones if you like and as you can see the the effect on your photo is crazy and talking about the effect on your photo let's go back to the rgb curve so this is the everything curve Right, so we're in the shadows here, and as you can see, if I drop them, no color is being added or taken away. It's just playing with the contrast and the exposure of the shot, but you don't wanna go crazy here. Let's say we went crazy, things get out of hand. You thought the clarity texture slider from before was incredible, this is insane, okay? So you don't wanna move things too far. As you can see, it just gets way out of hand. So we're gonna undo that, oh, and we're also gonna undo that. Something I always do, that's a nine times out of 10 in the tone curve, is just simply add an S curve. And that's just adding a little bit of contrast into your shot. So as you can see here, we are dropping the shadows a little bit. We are going to be just increasing the midtones a little bit and increasing the highlights. As you can see, it's a slight S curve. This is what I'm always going for. And then just like we raise the blacks here, I'm just gonna raise the blacks here a little bit and this starts to give a really nice fade over the entire shot. As you can see, this is way too far. So we're just gonna back that off a little bit and I also have a feeling our shadows might be a little bit too far down. So we might just raise those just a touch. They're pretty much back to where we started, but this is the idea of the tone curve. Small little changes, especially in the beginning until you get some confidence and you know, you're happy to go crazy. Just play with the tone curve slowly but surely and I promise you, you'll be far better off. Now. If everything here in the tone curve is a little bit overwhelming, which I totally understand, you can actually come down to point curve and you can, there's, there's a few little presets. You can save your own preset, but let's say we wanted to add strong contrast. As you can see, tiny little moves made a huge difference. And this is something that's baked in from Adobe. And as you can see, it's an S curve. And if I'm sure if we did medium contrast, it would just be a little bit less. I'm gonna do even a little bit less, the one that we did right here, and I'm happy with it. All right, let's move on to Color Mixer. Okay, scrolling down now to Color Mixer, we're going to just be focusing on the Color Mixer. We're then gonna get into Point Color a little later on, just after we've moved into, just after we've done Mixer. But the idea here is this is where you're gonna control all of your colors, which is really, really cool. So as you can see here, we've got hue, saturation, and luminance. The hue is gonna be controlling what colors show what colors. So for example, let me explain that a little better. Let's take yellow here. Let's say we wanted this to be completely orange. We could turn all the yellows into orange. And let's say we wanted all the greens to be yellow. As you can see, we can turn all the greens into yellow. We can double click on those to reset the sliders. And then if we take green and wanted them to be blue, we can do so, yellow to be green, and now we're getting a completely different look in our shot. Just like everything in Lightroom, you don't wanna be pushing and pulling things way too far, because as you can see, they were pretty dramatic changes and looked far from realistic. And that's not really the goal with editing, at least for me. Sure, some people have their own style, but especially when you're starting out, you do just want to kind of enhance reality. That's how I've always viewed Lightroom. So anyway, that is the hue sliders right there. Then we're moving into the saturation sliders where you can specifically choose what colors you want represented and what ones you wanna dial back. So what ones you wanna make more intense and what ones you want to you know, put to the side. So let's say here we're taking yellow because we have a very strong yellow cast in this shot. If we wanted to kill it all off, as you can see, we're only affecting the yellows. The uh, orange on Amanda's skin and the purple on her coat don't get touched. Command Z for that. And if we take the purple here, there's a not much purple, but as you can see, it does get affected just a little bit and we can push and pull. So let's say we wanted to increase the saturation on her coat. You really never wanna to go to 100. We could do it just like that. And then we've got luminance. And this is gonna be controlling how bright or how dark a color is. So if we dump, jump into yellow again, if we just boosted this up, as you can see, it becomes really bright. And if we take it down, it becomes really dark. And we can do the same thing with the purples here. We're just gonna dial these back a little bit. Okay, so now you get the general idea of how the color mix tab works. I'm gonna run you through exactly what I would do to this shot. So the first thing I would do is I would start to back off the yellows a little bit to give a little bit more of a green vibe. And I would actually take the yellow hue over to the to the green side just a touch very very minute little changes i'm then going to zoom in oh not too far we're just going to increase the oranges a little bit this is going to put a little bit of color in these areas of the image but also boost the overall skin tone this was a really cloudy day super easy to look a little bit pale so we're just going to increase the skin tones a little bit. It will increase the oranges to make Amanda look a little bit more tanned, which is something a lot of people like to do. And then we're gonna come into the greens here and I'm gonna desaturate these as well. I like more of a bluish greenish kind of, uh, sorry, a bluish grayish green tint to my photos. And this is exactly what desaturating the greens is gonna do. 
I'm then gonna come to luminance and I'm gonna turn down the luminance of the greens and the yellows just a little bit. And then if you come up to this little eye and this little eye is pretty much on every single tab of Lightroom. If you just click and hold, you can see the before of your edit just on this little tab, you release and your edit comes back. So as you can see, this just dials back those greens, oranges and yellows ever so slightly. And if you wanna see an overall before and after of your shot, you just hit backslash and then backslash again. So backslash before, backslash where we are. Okay, so that is more or less the mixer tab taken care of, apart from point color. Now point color is really, really interesting. I'm a huge fan of this tool, even though I don't use it all that much. It's a little bit finicky to get, you know, perfect, especially in the beginning, it's gonna take a little bit of time. But with that said, it's incredibly powerful. So as you can see in the mixer tab, we've got red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta to play with. But let's say there was a color in between that isn't represented here. Well, how is it gonna fall into one of these categories? Lightroom decides that. Well, then point color, you get to decide that. So what we do is we take this color dropper and let's say I didn't know what this color was right here, right? I can click it. And then all of a sudden I've got that hue. So I've got the hue, saturation and luminance sliders to play with. This is super powerful, okay? We can increase the range, which is gonna make the selection of our color point a little bit broader. So it's gonna affect more colors. Of course, we can also decrease that to make it less, you know, to, sorry, to make it more picky and only really select that one, you know, guess color range, if you will. And then we can shift the hue. So as you can see on the ground now and in other parts of the image, because this isn't the only part of the image that is represented with that color, we can change the hue, we can change the saturation. So backing this off a little bit is actually quite nice. Then we can also change the luminance of it. So maybe we just dial this back down just a little bit like that and I think things are looking good. And now if sliders aren't your thing, you can also do it over here with everything here. So for example, let's say we wanted to change the hue. We could do that by moving this around just like that. And then if we wanted to change the saturation, that's up and down. And if we wanted to change the luminance, this is up and down here. So just like that, we want this just a little bit lower. I'm happy with that. So if we turn this off, and back on, I guess that's gonna do the whole color mix tab. But either way, you get the idea of point color. This means you can specifically target one color that may not be represented in the mixer. You can edit it and you're good. Okay, now moving on to the color grading side of town. This is where I have a load of fun. Here, you can pretty much push and pull different colors into different areas of your shot. So right here, your hopefully color grading tab looks like this, but if not, you can choose the shadows, the midtones, the highlights, and the global color wheel right here. So let's go back to the main three here. And here, we're about to have a lot of fun. So I'm gonna put a little bit of blue into the shadows. And once again, you really don't want it to be too crazy. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of blue into our midtones. Actually, no, you know what? We're gonna put a little bit of warmth into the midtones. We want to make things a nice balance here. We're gonna put a little warmth into our midtones just like that. And then to cool it off, we're gonna put a little bit of blue into our highlights. And as you can see, you can select your hue just like that. And then you can select how intense it is along this line. So if we went crazy like that, I don't like that. Like I said, never push things too far, but we're gonna just back that off and I'm gonna get that saturation to about eight right there. If you wanna change things really specifically, you can click either here or on your little highlights bar there, and then you can change the luminance and you can also change the saturation here. You know, Let's say we wanted it to be 20, we can do it like that. So I get it, the little bar is a little bit finicky, not super ideal. And then something that a lot of people miss is the global color wheel. And this is where you can just push one color into the entire shot. So since we did blue, orange, blue, I'm gonna put just a little bit of blue, if you're getting the idea, I'm after that cooler vibe in this shot, into the image here. We're just gonna back that off a little bit. We're gonna turn it off and back on. It's super subtle, but I find that this is one of those areas where you can really start to bake in your style and your specific look in your shots. Okay, moving on now down to detail. This is something I don't particularly touch. Like I said before, the sharpening in photos out of camera, if you're using you know, a camera made in the last five years with a lens that is somewhat good, it's not just the basic kit lens that came with your camera, 
you shouldn't really need to sharpen your shot. If you do, it's fairly straightforward. You pretty much need to just increase your sharpening. And you can also do a little bit of masking here. This is gonna be able to let Lightroom know what to and what not to sharp. The more you increase the masking, the smaller part of the image that's going to be selected. It'll just kind of focus in on what is focused and already sharp in the shot. The less amount of masking, it's just gonna sharpen everything. So I'm gonna undo both of these things and then we're gonna scroll down to the noise. This is a super cool new feature. This was shot at 2000 ISO. And if we have a look in our shadows here, this was shot on the R5C, so there's really little to no noise. We don't really need to do denoise, but you can do it manually. So just increasing the lumens, incre increasing the luminance, I should be saying, right, is gonna give just a little bit of a softer vibe to the shot. Or you can hit denoise, and this is gonna bring up a whole new window. This uses AI, it's incredibly good. I find this, it, 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 honestly, if you go shoot at like 50,000 ISO, bring your photo into here, it's gonna clean things up really nicely. So you can play around here and you get a live view of what it's gonna look like. So as you can see, if we did four, it just looks like it was before. And if we go all the way up to 100, it's gonna really clean up the shot. It might not be the best little area to see. Here we go, that's before, that's after. Quite impressive if you ask me. So anyway, I'm not gonna do this because it creates a whole new image and then you've gotta edit that image from there. We're just gonna hit cancel for now. If you do hit denoise and go ahead, then it's just gonna take a little bit of time. Like it said there, it'll take about a minute and then it should create a brand new image. That's detail out of the way. We're not gonna to spend too much time on it. It does get a little bit finicky, but believe me, you don't need to focus on that all too much. Lens correction is super straightforward. This is pretty much gonna take away warping and other little chromatic aberrations in your shot. Chromatic aberration is when you have a highlight and then a dark part directly contrasting on that highlight. And sometimes you can get purple and pink fringing on it. This is designed to be able to take that away. And then your lens correction is designed to take away warping. So if we turn this off, oh, if I just hit before and after. So unfortunately I can't show you what this looks like because this lens, the 28 to 70, doesn't have any warping at 57 millimeters. If I show you before and after, nothing really changes. There might be a little bit of vignetting that was changed, but for example, you can either just hit enable profile corrections and Lightroom will read the metadata in your photo, work out what camera it was shot on and work out what lens it was shot on, make the corrections as it needs to. Or you can come in here and you can you know, decide what lens and whatever you shot on. Lightroom does a great job. And if you have, like I said, a camera from the last like five years, or a lens from the last five years, this is more focusing on the lenses, then you don't really need to play around with this. Just hit enable profile corrections. It's gonna de-warp and de-vignette your photo and then you can control it from there. So we're gonna continue moving down here, transform. This is super, super cool. This is pretty much gonna give you the control of being able to move and warp your image in any way. So let's say you weren't straight on and you needed to adjust your photo a little bit. Let's say, you know, I was a little bit to the left or to the right and I was holding the camera on a strange angle. You can do that all here. I don't really play around with the rotate all that much purely because we're gonna do that in the crop tool. And then the other cool part about this is the aspect, at least for me, right? If you're shooting purely just landscapes and you wanna make a mountain seem a little bit taller really quickly, you can just increase the aspect. It's gonna squeeze up your image. You then wanna hit constrain crop so you don't have weird white bars on the side of your photo. And then your mountains will look a little bit taller or the buildings in your photo will look a little bit taller. That's the transform tool. Super glossing over this purely for the fact that it really depends on what kind of images you're shooting with and what kind of adjustments you need to make. But the idea here is if things are a little bit skewed and a little bit off, you can come down to transform and you can, uh, you can change some things. You can make it look a lot nicer. All right, moving on down to lens blur. This is something that's not gonna really work with this photo, but this is really, really cool, especially for iPhone photos. So if we hit apply here, it's gonna analyze our shot. And the idea here is it can add lens blur realistic lens blur to your shot. So once we've hit apply, it's done its little analysis. Nine times out of 10, Lightroom is going to nail what should be and should not be out of focus. And you can see here, if we turn this off, oh, if we turn this off and back on, you can see a little bit right here on this leaf, it has been blurred just a touch. Whoop, I don't wanna close that. Just a touch, you can see it gets a little bit more blurry. But like I said, it's really not ideal for a photo like this. You want an image just like this, for example, like what we're talking at, where we can really blur out that background behind me and things are looking completely different. But Amanda's too far away from the camera here and there's not enough depth in the photo to really be able to take advantage of this. But you can choose your bokeh, you can choose how blurry things get. So you can just crank up the blur amount and that's just gonna really increase your blur. And then like I said, you can choose your bokeh. So you can choose what it looks like you know, the shape behind your subject. You play around with this with a subject photo, with a, with a product or a portrait, 
And man, this is really, really cool. Okay, now moving on to effects. This is where you can add a little bit of vignette. This is something I do in the masking tab. So I'm not gonna play with that here. And then you can also add some grain to your photo. If you ever have banding in the highlights once you export your photo, if you add just a little bit of grain, nine times out of 10, it's gonna solve that issue. I don't need to add any grain here. I'm good with how things look. And then we have camera calibration. I've also done a complete breakdown of camera calibration, but this pretty much lets you change how your photo interprets color. So let's say we wanted our reds to be a little bit more orange. It's gonna shift a lot of stuff in your photo and like everything with Lightroom, you don't wanna push or pull things too far. By the way, I can see we have left blur on. We're gonna tick this off. Now things are looking a lot nicer. Lightroom doesn't nail it all the time. And with a photo like this, it's hard. Anyway, back to camera calibration. So as you can see here, if we move things over to the orange yellow side of town, we are getting a lot more of that green yellow in our shot. Amanda's skin tone is way off. And if we just double click on that, things are looking a lot more healthy and back to life. Usually what I do is all I do is I come in here and I pull all the way to the left, all the way to the right. And I go, okay, I like this side a little bit more. And I'll just make that change there. I'll do the same with saturation. Okay, I like it a little bit more saturated. And I'll do this for every single color. Okay, I like it a little bit more to the right. I'm gonna do it here, there, a little bit desaturated, here, there. Definitely gonna take this side just a touch. Boom, boom, a little bit less, just like that. Turn it off, turn it back on. It's very subtle. You don't wanna be making giant changes here unless that's your style then go for it. All right, so now we're pretty much done with all the settings. We are gonna dive into crop and masking in just a moment, but I do wanna run you through a, a few little things before we do. So let's say we were using a preset. Uh, let's say we are using a, a moody preset here. So let's say we were using this preset right here from my mood pack. Let's say we are using mood four, for example, right? Let's say I didn't want all this mood for on the photo. What I can do is I can come up here to the amount and I can decrease the intensity of it. And then I can go in here and make the changes as I like. I'm gonna undo that because I don't want to add a preset on here. I don't just wanna be saying, hey, this is how you use Lightroom. You just use my presets. So we're gonna close our little preset tab here, but that's a really cool tool that Lightroom has only recently introduced in like the last 12 months. If you wanna copy over your settings, you can just hit copy here. And then the idea is you can choose what settings you do and don't want copied. You can hit copy and then you can hit paste on a different photo. And that way you can just copy and paste your settings over to different photos. And you can do this for hundreds of photos and edit really quickly if they were all shot in the same kind of lighting conditions. And you know, it was, it made sense to do so. You know, you wouldn't do it from different days or, you know, completely different locations with different subjects. So that's something I do all the time. And then we've also got down here, we can reset our photo back to normal. You can also undo that. And then that that's pretty much it. That's what we're working with in the develop tab there. Let's move on to cropping and masking. So we're gonna zoom back up to the top here and we're gonna hit crop. This is really cool. So we're gonna run through a handful of things first. We can change the aspect ratio up here. For Instagram stories, we're talking 16 by nine. For Instagram posts, we're talking four by five. So let's crop four by five. Now, chances are your crop tool actually doesn't look like this whatsoever. If you hit O, you can cycle through a load of different crop overlays, which is gonna give you a really unique perspective on how you want your composition to look. This is something I use all the time, this one, and this one, believe it or not, knowing that this is the middle point, you can see by this little bar up there, this little bar, let's say I wanted to move Manda, Manda directly in the middle of the shot. We go back to O, yep, this one also lines up. I'm happy with that, okay? Back to the crop tool here. You can also rotate your image just like this. This isn't something I'm a huge fan of doing. What I prefer to do instead is let's say we had a clean horizon across this image. You can press this little ruler here and you can draw a line across the image. So let's say our horizon was like that and it's gonna auto adjust and that's it. Super simple, a very unique little tool inside of Lum there, but I'm happy with this crop. I think it looks pretty good. Maybe it uh, needs a little rotation. You can also come to the side of the crop and uh, your little cursor is gonna turn into this. And then you can just up and down a little bit. There we go. Amanda's now looking like she's standing up straight. I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's more or less the crop tool taken care of. There isn't too much to dive into here. It's just gonna take a little bit of time to work out how you wanna compose your shots and what platform you're you know, planning on posting them to. So you can also leave them. This is something I also do. You can also leave them in the four by six. And also actually one last thing, if you hit X, this turns it from portrait 
to landscape or landscape to portrait. So let's say you took a landscape photo, but you wanted to just crop straight in the middle, you hit X and then you're good to go from there, okay? So let's leave this in its original aspect ratio. But now, as you can see, we're cropped, we're rotated in and Amanda's centered. So I'm gonna hit enter there and we're good. All right, now before diving into the masking tab, we're gonna hit our, our little healing brush here. This has been improved, it's still not great. I'd recommend editing in Photoshop and you can do that purely by coming to your photo here, right click and then hit edit in, edit in Photoshop. It's gonna export it as a TIFF. You get to play around, hit Command S or Control S if you're on Windows, then save it once you've made all your changes in Photoshop and it'll shoot it back into Lightroom and you can edit from there, okay? It's not gonna keep the settings, it'll keep the look, but you won't be able to you know, go back and tweak your sliders. You'll have to do that whole process again. So. This is a little healing brush right here. And let's say we wanted to remove some of these leaves. Let's uh, make this a little bit smaller with our uh, bracket keys right here, or we can just change the size. Want that feather up quite a lot. And then we're just gonna draw around here. We are on the uh, heel. This should be the heel. I believe so, yes, we're on heel. We've got remove here and then we've got clone stamp. So for me, the, the healing tool has done has done well here. So the little blemishes on your face and whatnot, heel should be absolutely fine. I still don't know why Lightroom hasn't been able to nail this tool yet, but anyway, it's 2024, we're here. All right, now the healing tool is wrapped up. Let's dive into red eye. Look. Amanda doesn't have any red eyes. If you're using a flash at an event, this is something that you might have to work with. But for us right now, not really, okay? Just simply follow the prompts on the screen and you're more or less good to go. They make it super simple. All right, now moving in to the masking side of things. This is where things get really cool. So. Instantly, you might have just seen this little person pop up here. Lightroom AI has made it so incredibly easy to mask specific things about a person. So as you can see here, even though Amanda's super far away, we could mask out her lips, her eye scrella, which is like the white part of your eye. Insane, definitely pronouncing that wrong. But either way, this is really, really cool to be able to create a load of masks. So let's just say we wanted the entire person or even not, let's just say we wanted facial skin. We have no body skin to really choose from apart from her hands and neck. All right, we'll take that as well. We're gonna hit create mask and we're gonna come in here and we're just going to drop. Oh, we can hit O by the way, and this is gonna turn on or off the overlay. And then if you wanna change the color of the overlay, you can just press this little green box right here on the right hand side and you can move this around. You know, maybe we want it red, maybe we want it back to green. I really like green, um, but we're gonna press O and that's gonna hide the overlay. And we're just gonna drop the highlights a little bit. We're also gonna come down here. You can do so much to masks, by the way. I'm gonna drop the clarity and the texture. Okay, I'm happy with that. We're gonna open up the masking tool again. We're gonna hit create mask. And now we have the option to select a subject, AI select sky, AI select background, AI select people, that's crazy. Select objects, and then we get to the manual brushes and the manual masks here. So something I do all the time to my photos is I open up a radial mask and I'm gonna draw a huge radial mask around here. So as you can see, you know, if I move this to the side, this part of the image is not masked this part of the image is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this over the mask, like over the image, I should say like this. I'm gonna hit invert and then I'm gonna come to exposure and I'm gonna start dropping it. Like I said before, I don't play with the vignette tool, but I do play with a vignette inside of masking, okay? So we're gonna be able to drop that and instantly if we press this little eye and now all of a sudden, Amanda is super focused and is 100% the the subject in this frame if it wasn't already super clear before this really helps people focus in on your subject and i think this is a really really cool way to add a little bit more depth to your shot and speaking of depth something else i'd like to do let's use the linear gradient for this one is come up from the bottom of the image just draw it up just like that and we're going to drop the exposure a little bit here too this adds a little bit more depth in our shot looks like amanda's a little bit further away than she might really be and it also just takes your eye away from that distraction Okay, so let's say, for example, we just wanted to select all the greens in the top part of the shot, okay? I'm gonna select the radial gradient here, and I'm gonna draw over the top just the greens, right? Now, we do have some oranges, and we do have a little bit of blue up here in the sky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna intersect this mask, come down to here, so I'm clicking these little dots here, intersect mask, color range. And you can do this with luminance as well, which is gonna be just dark and bright parts of the shot, right? And I'm just gonna click on green. Okay, now as you can see, it's deselected 
all the other parts that aren't this color and you can refine it here. So if I really wanted to get specific, it's just that shade of green. If I was a little bit more, more loosey goosey, you know, we could, we could run that up. So I'm gonna reset that just by double clicking. I'm gonna press O so I can't see the uh, green overlay. And I might just tone down the exposure a little bit. I also might come to here, drop the clarity, drop the texture, whoop, just like that. And now things are a little bit just more tapered off in the background. Maybe the exposure is a little bit too dark, but this is really powerful. You can do this with color. You can do this with, um, you can do this with luminance as well. And let's just say for one last little part here, right? Let's say we went like this, okay? But we didn't want this bottom part of the image getting affected. I could come into here. I could come to intersect mask with, intersect mask with brush. And then we can come to invert. And now what I can do is I can remove parts of certain masks and now I'm only still selecting what's green. Very, very powerful. I don't want this mask, I'm gonna remove it. And then we can come back to create mask. Let's say we wanted to brush, okay? So now this is giving us complete freedom of what we do and don't want to select. Something I usually do is keep auto mask selected as it's a complete disaster and takes way too long. And now you can see here, let's say we put auto mask off. I'm just gonna paint like this. Crazy, right? We can zoom in, no worries. You can come over to the top left, click here and zoom in, right? We can double click to zoom out. Hey, come on, there we go. Right, so let's say we wanted to create that brush mask. We are going to hit auto mask now, make this a little smaller. And now Lightroom will pretty much keep us in the lines the whole time. It's not 100% accurate, but it's a lot more accurate than it was before. You can come in here, see where we are. So, you know, we've gone over a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. If I was a little bit more careful with it and just started off zooming in, but you get the idea. Okay, we're gonna delete that mask. I'm super happy with this. That's more or less all the changes you need to be able to make in your shot to get started with Lightroom, but we're not done. Let's export this bad boy. All right, so to export your shot, uh, for me, I always use the short cut, which is Command Shift E, right? Or you can come to File, oh, you can come to File, down to Export, and when then we're good, right? And you can see Command, oh, Command Shift E, right? So Command Shift E, is gonna bring up this right here. Now we're talking about export settings. I'm gonna run you through mine. These are mine for Instagram, okay? So these are the best export settings for Instagram. Little little cheeky one for everyone still here at this time of the video. I do appreciate you guys watching all the way. Okay, so we're gonna dive in here and this is, this is pretty much all the same. You can keep this as is. You can change your file naming structure, not something that I do, but here is where it gets crucial. So you want your file image formats at the JPEG, quality 85. Limit file size, no, don't tick that. I believe this is set by default in the sRGB color space. And then you wanna resize to fit on the long edge at 2700 pixels, resolution 72, and Instagram should not compress your shot. Okay, that's great, but what if you wanna export full size? Well, you can come here, that should be set to 100. That's concerning. All right, so once again, you can leave this as is. JPEG, quality 100, don't limit the file size, same color space, and then just put resolution at 300 and don't resize to fit, and more or less, you're good to go. You can hit export, that's gonna export your file, and that's pretty much it. If you wanna export multiple files, you would have all of them down here, you'd make sure this one's selected, hold shift, click, and then you can command shift E, and then that will take you to the export screen and it's gonna export you in bulk. But guys, that is pretty much a fast run through of Lightroom Classic in 2024. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this has been super useful for you. And guys, I appreciate your time. I really, really do. So if you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the world and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.